The Jack Benny Program, transcribed, presented by Lucky Strike. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky, strike, be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike today. If smoking pleasure's what you seek, try perfect lucky strike. There's better taste in every puff enjoyment you will like. Honestly, Lucky's taste better than any other cigarette. Now take this smoking tip from us and you will surely say, for better taste that's smooth and mild, go Lucky Strike today. You bet. Lucky's taste better than any other cigarette. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky, strike, be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike today. Friends, think about this for a moment. Taste makes a big difference in smoking enjoyment. And Lucky's taste better than any other cigarette. Yes, better. And here's why. Fine tobacco and only fine tobacco always gives you the enjoyment of a truly better tasting cigarette. And LSMFT, Lucky Strike, means fine tobacco. So for everything you want in your cigarette, be happy, go lucky. Make your next carton Lucky Strike. You'll agree, Lucky's taste better than any other cigarette. Be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike today. Remember, Lucky's taste better than any other cigarette. <laughs> Gentlemen, in just a half hour, Jack Benny will do his television show. But right now, it's time for his radio program. With Barry Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, as there are only two more programs left in the current Lucky Strike series... At this time, I would like to pay tribute to a man who for the past 37 weeks has brought joy and happiness into millions of American homes. Uh, don't forget the 569,000 trailers, too. <laughs> a man whose wit, charm, and personality have endeared him to the hearts of his public. Keep going, Don. We have a half hour. <laughs> a man who every year at this time picks up our options, and here he is, Jack Benny! Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking, and Don, since you brought the matter up, I suppose you received the contract I mailed you for next season. Yes, yes, I did, Jack, and I'm not quite satisfied with some of the clauses. Huh? After serving you faithfully for 17 years, I'm surprised that you had the effrontery to present me with a contract that was not only insulting, but relegates me to a position that no self-respecting man would accept. Well... <laughs> And uh, just what is your complaint, Mr. Wilson? Well, now, here's the situation, Jack. Mm -hmm. You get a lot of laughs at the expense of my being fat. Uh-huh. And this year, my weekly salary has been at the rate of $2 a pound. Uh-huh. <laughs> so I think it's only fair that next year I get $3 a pound. Three bucks a pound, huh? Don, I wouldn't give you $3 a pound if all your fat was trimmed off and you were hanging on a hook. <laughs> Anyway, the raise I offered you is as high as I can go. Now, what do you say? I can't sign the contract now, Jack. I'll have to talk it over with the little woman. Oh, you and the little woman. Haven't you got a mind of your own? Yes, but I respect my wife's opinion. I'm very devoted to her. I see. After all, I'm home with her every day except Sunday. Well, I can fix that, too. <laughs> now, look, Don, I've been very fair about this whole thing, and I... Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. What are you talking about? Oh, Don isn't satisfied with his new contract for next season. He isn't? No. Oh, my goodness, and after all you've done for him. Well, that's the way it goes, Mary. There isn't much gratitude in this business. Why, it? Don Wilson, you ought to be ashamed. Never mind, Mary, never mind. Thanks, just the same. By the way, have you read your new contract? Yeah. What are you trying to do, bring back slavery? <laughs> oh, so I'm going to have trouble with you, too. Now, what's wrong with your contract? I don't like Clause 7. Law 7? Oh, Mary, it only happens around Thanksgiving. I don't care. If you buy a turkey, kill it yourself. <laughs> Mary, can I help it if I'm sentimental? 
You're not sentimental. When you pay for a whole turkey, you hate to chop anything off. <laughs> oh, stop. Sentimental. You even use the head for badminton. I stopped doing that. I couldn't stand the way it came over the net staring at me. <laughs> anyway, Mary, you, you're, you got a lot of nerve complaining about your contract. After all... Hiya, it's... Jackson. Hiya, Don. Hey, live it. <laughs> Hello, Phil. Hey, Phil, it's about time you got here. What made you late? Well, it ain't my fault, Jackson. I had plenty of time to get here, but just as I left the house, Alice fainted. Oh, my goodness. That must have scared you to death. No, no, it happens every time I kiss her goodbye. <laughs> oh, brother. That's what she said as she hit the floor. <laughs> Phil, Phil, do you really have that effect on Alice? Jackson, she won't even let me shave with a mirror. She don't want my love divided. <laughs> Phil, if I paid you by the pound, your head would ruin me. <laughs> now, look, Dennis isn't here yet to sing his song, so pick up your baton, let's have a band. Ah, uh -huh, uh -huh, Jackson, I ain't making with that downbeat till I talk to you about that new contract you sent me. My lawyers don't like it. Your lawyers? Who are they? Kirchie, Kimmick, Fletcher, and Fink. <laughs> Well, Phil, just what is it you and your lawyers object to in the contract? We don't like the clause that says I got to get to bed on Saturday night before 3 a.m. Well, it's for your own good, Phil. After all, you have a program to do on Sunday. I want you to look bright and fresh. I know, but if I lose that red glow in my eyes, I ain't got no personality. <laughs> Phil, I've been playing badminton with a turkey head for two years, and it looks better than you do. <laughs> See, the way I shouted that gag, it should have got a bigger laugh. There's a thing like that. <laughs> Any, anyway, I'll talk to your lawyers about your contract later. But right now, let's have a band number. Okay, Jackson, what would you like to hear? Guy Lombardo, but I'm stuck with you. <laughs> <laughs> now, go ahead, play anything. Okay, okay. Hey, wait a minute, Phil, hold it. The quartet just came in, and we can have the commercial now. Don, what song are the boys going to do? Well, they've prepared a number from Guys and Dolls called If I Were a Bell. Oh, you mean the one that goes, uh, ask me how do I feel, ask me now that we're cozy and clinging. Well, sir, all I can say is, if I were a bell, I'd be ringing. I love that. That's a wonderful number, you know. Well, Jack, they rehearsed it, but I don't think they're going to sing it. Why not? They're not too happy about the new contract you sent them, and... Five years with you, and you won't even give them a raise. Well, Don, whether they like their contract or not, they're still working for me, and I want their number right now. All right, but they're still mad at you. Well, isn't that exasperating? <laughs> tell them, tell them to sing. Tell them to sing, and I don't want to hear any more about it. Okay, fellas, you better do it. Well, I'll say they better. All right. Ask us how do we feel, ask us now that we're working for Benny Well sir, all we can say is we can't save a dime or a penny We had trouble, you won't believe, since we carried this heavier load Boy, if we were a tree, we'd leave. Or if we were a bomb, we'd explode. Ask us, how do we feel? Little us with our quiet upbringing. With no future in sight, there's no reason for us to keep singing. Boy, we really believe that Jack must be the thing. Oh, if we were a gun, we'd go bang, bang, bang. I want a commercial, never mind that, a commercial. Ask us, why do we choose Lucky Strike for a real smoking pleasure? More like it. Well, sir, all we can say, it's the one cigarette that we treasure. From the moment you take one puff, you will find they are mild and they're light. And there's never a puff that's rough. Lucky Strike has a taste that's just right. That's why millions of men always say it's for luck, he's their yearning. 
So if we were a match, we would see that we'd always be burning. Oh, burning. And if we were a carton, oh, how lucky we'd be. Cause if we were a smoke, we'd be L S M F T. That was If I Were a Bell, sung by the Sports Madman Quartet, <laughs> and accompanied by Phil Harris and the sweetest music this side of Spike Jones. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, hey, wait a minute. Huh? Look, all year you've been picking on me and my musicians. Why don't you leave the boys alone just once? <laughs> Especially on this of, of all days. Why, well, what's, what's so special about today, Phil? It's Petrillo's birthday. <laughs> Patrillo's birthday? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Caesar. Happy birthday to you. Aw, oh, isn't that sweet? <laughs> Phil, Phil, believe me, I don't enjoy insulting your boys, but look at them. No jackets, no ties, collars open. What a way to come to a broadcast. But Jackson, this is the middle of May. The weather's hot. They're just trying to keep cool. Trying to keep cool, eh? Then why is Bagby, your piano player, wearing gloves? Because he don't want to leave his fingerprints on nothing. <laughs> well, Phil, if they haven't caught him by now, he's safe. Believe me. <laughs> so will you do me the courtesy, Phil, of asking Sir Charles Bagby to remove his gloves when your band accompanies Dennis Day in his song? Say, Jack, where is Dennis? I don't know, but I hope he gets here pretty soon. I want to talk to him about his new contract for next year. A uh, new contract for Dennis? I thought you had him signed up till he just fades away. <laughs> well, I, I have, Mary, but I added some new clauses. Hey, Livy, you should have seen the clause he sneaked into my contract. Never mind. Uh, what was it, Phil? If I ever find a dime before I can spend it, I gotta call Jackson and find out if he lost one. <laughs> Phil, I just did that for a gag. Where's your sense of humor? Hey, maybe that's Dennis. I'll get it. Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny. This is Rochester. <laughs> Hello, Rochester. What do you want? I've been listening to the program, boss, and it occurred to me that we haven't discussed my contract yet. <laughs> well, Rochester, you've been working in my house for 14 years, and I feel that there's no necessity for a written contract. Uh-huh. Now, everything is perfectly clear, and we have what is known as a verbal agreement. Uh-huh. Now, that means we have a mutual understanding. Why put things on paper? The amount of money involved is too small. That's what I mean. Let's blow it up a little. <laughs> You'll be taken care of, and believe me, Rocha, there's no necessity for a written contract. But my attorney's advised it, whereas and to whip. Your attorneys, who are they? Remus, Bemis, Callaway, and Smythe. Oh, well, tell Remus, Bemis, Callaway, and Smythe to get in touch with Kerchie, Kimmick, Fletcher, and Fink. <laughs> Let them handle it. It's the same firm. They've got a branch on Central Avenue. <laughs> oh, well, anyway, Rochester, you've got nothing to worry about. I'm giving you a substantial raise next year. Substantial? Yes, you know what the word means, don't you? I ain't illiterate, I'm skeptical. <laughs> well, you're getting it, so don't let it bother you. I'll see you later. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, say, boss. Now what? Are you still gonna have company for dinner tomorrow night? Oh, yes, I'm glad you remind me, Rochester. You better run down to the store and get a leg of lamb. A leg of lamb? Why don't you get a turkey? Why? After dinner, they might want to play badminton. <laughs> No, just get a leg of lamb and a small squab. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> See, I, I don't know what Rochester's worried about. I've always taken good care of him. Oh, hello, everybody. Hello, Dennis. Hi, kid. Dennis, how come you're so late? Well, I was out in the hall reading my contract with the new clauses in it. Oh, then you got the contract. Yeah, this is one Irishman who ain't smiling. <laughs> 
All right, Dennis, what's wrong with it? A lot of things, but especially Clause G. Oh, for heaven's sake, Dennis, you don't have to worry about Clause G until you're 65. I know, but why should I give you 10% of my Social Security? <laughs> because I'll be 72 then, and I'll need it. <laughs> That's why. Jack, I can't understand you. You've got a ridiculous clause in my contract, too. What's he got in yours, Liv? <laughs> If my sister Babe ever gets married, she has to buy the ring from him. <laughs> Mary, if your sister Babe ever finds a man who will marry her, not only will I give her the ring free, but I'll play Oh, Promise Me at the wedding. I'm sure that... I'll get it. <laughs> Hello? Yeah, this is Phil. How are you, kid? Huh? Oh, just a second, I'll ask you. Hey, Jackson, it's Kenny Baker. Kenny Baker? What does he want? He found a dime. Can he spend it? <laughs> now, cut that off. There was no one on the phone, you and that smart Alex sound man. <laughs> now, look, Dennis. You came in late, but we won't discuss that now. Just sing your song. I'm not going to sing till I get a better contract. What's the matter with everybody? The quartet didn't want to sing. You don't want to sing? What's gotten into you? I know my rights. I've been speaking to my lawyers. Your lawyers? Who are they? Beagle, bagel, cream cheese, and lox. <laughs> Beagle, bagel, cream cheese? <laughs> Beagle, bagel, cream cheese, and lox? Beagle has a hole in his head. <laughs> that does it. Dennis, I've given you your chance. I'll get somebody else to sing. Oh, that's what you think. You can't get anyone else to sing on such short notice. Never mind that. Say, Phil... Won't you come with me to Alabama? Let's go... I don't want to! Now, Bob Crosby, Bob Crosby's rehearsing down the hall. Go over and get him. Gladly, Jackson, gladly. On second thought, maybe Mary better go. You might run into an old corkscrew, you know. <laughs> Mary, would you mind going? Bob Crosby is in Studio B. Oh, sure, Jack. Gosh, CBS is crowded on Sundays. Hello, Amos. Hello, Andy. Oh, hello, Gracie. Hello, George. Hello, Edgar. Hello, Charlie. Hello, Fibber. Hello, Molly. Whoops, I must have walked too far. <laughs> Maybe they're just visiting some friends here. Oh, here's Studio B. I think this is where the Campbell Soup program is rehearsing. Oh, there's Bob out on the stage. All right, fellas, let's go through that number once more. Here we go, fellas. Because of you, there's a soul in my heart. Because of you, my romance had its start. Because of you, the sun will shine, the stars and moon will say you're mine, forever and never to part. I only live. For your love and your kiss It's paradise to be near you like this Because of you My life is now worthwhile And I can smile Because of you I only live for your love and your kiss It's paradise To be near you Like this Because Of you My life is now Worthwhile and I can Smile Because of you
That was wonderful, fellas. You can take five now. Take a break, huh? Oh, Bob, Bob. Oh, hello, Mary. Gee, Bob, that was a beautiful song. Well, thank you. You know, it's amazing. I closed my eyes when you sang, and you sounded exactly like America's number one crooner. No kidding? Did I sound that much like Gary? <laughs> Bob, if you've got a minute, Jack would like you to step over to our studio. You know, that's a coincidence. I was just going over to see him myself. You know, I'm a little peeved at him. You know, he's making it hard for me to sing. Well, I don't understand. How can Jack make it hard for you to sing? Well, I can't hit the high notes anymore. He puts too much starch in my collar. <laughs> oh. Well, that's Rochester's fault. Jack's the rough, dry man. <laughs> anyway, Bob, he'd like to have you sing a song on his program. Today? Yeah, right now. Hmm, okay. Say, fellas, I'll be back in a few minutes. Well, at Jack's studio is right down the hall, Bob. I know, but uh, just a second. I've, I've got to do something. Uh, Bob, Bob, you punch a time clock? Brother, <laughs> Brother Everett makes me. <laughs> oh, well, let's go. Gee, it must be kind of embarrassing having to punch a time clock. Yeah, Brother Everett's always pushing us around. You know, sometime I'd like to get even with him. Oh, we shouldn't complain about relatives because... Say, I just got an idea. Is Everett married? No, why? Well, I have a sister who's single, too. Look, Mary, I just want to get even. I don't want to get ahead of him. <laughs> Oh, well, here we are. And furthermore, Dennis, I think you should know that... Oh, hello, Bob. Hello, Jack. Did you want to see me? Yes, yes, come right in. By the way, do you know any of my gang? Why, sure. Where's Don Wilson? Any place you look. <laughs> well, hello, Bob. Hiya, Rob. Hiya, Phil. Say, did you pay your respects? Yes. My boy sang it a few moments ago. <laughs> yes, and Bob, uh, Bob, this is, uh, this is Dennis Day. Well, it's a pleasure to meet you, Dennis. I've got two shows. What do you got? <laughs> well, I've got three brothers, Larry, Everett, and Daddy Warbucks. <laughs> hey, hey, that's pretty funny. Fair. <laughs> Jack, what's bothering Clancy here? <laughs> don't mind him, Bob. He's just jealous because I want you to sing a song on my show. Sing? Well, I don't know, Jack. Oh, it's strictly business, Bob. I intend to pay you. Oh? Now, how much do you get for singing a song on the radio? $3,000. <laughs> Bob, I'm going to ask you that question again, and this time, don't ad lib. <laughs> well, I'm not ad libbing. That's my price, $3,000. Gee. Well, all good singers get that much. Where, where? Who, who, who? When, when, when? <laughs> where, where? <laughs> Dennis. Who, who? Dennis, sit down. <laughs> sit down. Well, Jack, do you want me to sing or, or not? What'd you say, Bob? You want me to sing or not? Now, don't be hasty, Bob. Now, for $3,000, you sing both the verse and the chorus of a song, don't you? That's right. Uh, now, Bob, most people don't know the verse anyway. <laughs> what would you charge for just a chorus? $2,000. Hmm. Well, we wouldn't need a whole chorus. You see, the sportsman <laughs> quartet just sang. Now, how much would you charge for, say, 16 bars? 1500 Gee, that's almost $100 a bar. And they're worth it, Dad. <laughs> you keep out of this. Bob, can't you give me something a little less expensive? Well, for 10 bucks, I can crack my knuckles in C-sharp. <laughs> <laughs> Look, at, I'll tell the jokes, you see. <laughs> right now, we're discussing business. Anyway, Bob, we shouldn't haggle about prices in front of the audience. It makes you look cheap. <laughs> I'll sing your song and I'll give you $500. Not me, Jack. But Bob, it's silly for two old friends to argue like this. Go ahead and sing. We can settle it later in court, you know? <laughs> Go ahead. All right, 
I'll get, uh, I'll go get my musicians to accompany me. Now, wait a minute, little brother. Yeah? Uh, what's the matter with my boys? Your boys? Yeah, they're just waiting for the downbeat. Hmm. Bill, I don't want to insult your boys on this, of old days. But I wouldn't let your band accompany me if I were blowing a safe. <laughs> Now, just a minute, chicken gumbo. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with my musicians. Oh, no? No. Hit him, Phil. <laughs> Dennis, be quiet. You got a lot of nerve, Crosby, coming over to make trouble. I was asked to come over here. Who asked you? You did. Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> now, look, Bob. I'll give you the money you want, but for that, you'll also have to appear on my Lucky Strike television show. Well, I'd love to do that, Jack. When does your television show go on? In just about three minutes. Three minutes? Yes. And if you'll excuse me, I've got to rush over and put on my makeup. See you later, Bob. Say, Mary, besides Jack and me, who else is going to be on the television show? Well, I'm going to be on it in Rochester and the greatest golfer in the world, Ben Hogan. No, Ben? Yes, Bob, and it's a real cute show. This is the way it's going to open. The first scene is in Jack's house in Beverly Hills. It's early in the afternoon. A lot of things happen, and then I come in to pick up Jack, and we go to the country club. That's where we meet you and Ben Morgan, and we all go out and play golf. Ladies and gentlemen, each year forest fires destroy 30 million acres of timberland. Timberland that is vitally needed to keep our country strong and to raise our production higher than ever before. Most of these fires started because someone was careless. Don't leave campfires burning. Never drop lighted matches or cigarettes. Put them out. Remember, only you can prevent forest fires. Thank you. Jack, we'll be back in just a moment, but first... We've had a perfect takeoff, friends, and as we end our climb, light's better tasting Lucky Strike to have a better time. You'll find Lucky's taste better than any other cigarette. Each year to see what's new in gowns, I fly to Gay Perry. But here's a line that's always smart as LSMFT. You'll agree with me. Lucky's tastes better than any other cigarette. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky, strike, be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike today. Friends, for more real deep down smoking pleasure, switch to Lucky Strike. For Lucky's taste better than any other cigarette. Yes, puff after puff, you'll enjoy smoothness, mildness, far better taste than in any other cigarette you've ever smoked. You see, fine tobacco and only fine tobacco always gives you a better tasting cigarette. And LSMFT, Lucky Strike, means fine tobacco. So if you're missing out on that extra measure of smoking pleasure, light up a Lucky. Yes, be happy, go Lucky. You'll discover Lucky's taste better than any other cigarette. Make your next carton Lucky Strike. Be happy, go Lucky, go Lucky Strike today. Remember, Lucky's taste better than any other cigarette. Now, Rochester, hurry and finish making me up. My television show goes on in 30 seconds. I am, boss. Hold still. I've got to put on a little more makeup. A little more. There may be a lot of close-ups, so I want to cover up all the wrinkles. Yeah, that ought to do it. Is it dry? Yeah, but don't smile. Your face will crack like a sidewalk. <laughs> I won't. I won't. Oh, darn it, I smile. <laughs> Good night, folks. Sure to hear Dennis Day in the day in the life of Dennis Day. Bob Crosby can be heard on Club 15 over this CBS network. The Jack Benny program is heard by our armed forces overseas through the facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Transcribed, this is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.